a lot of four crude Indian artifacts from Saginaw, Michigan. I've been collecting and finding Native American artifacts since about 1986. My God, has it been that long? Usually I have no problem in recognizing a piece, but once in a while I come across things that make me kind of scratch my head and wonder about. Such is the case with four pieces that I found yesterday, May 9th, 2015. Right now, a bit of uh, a lot of old homes here in Saginaw have been uh, condemned and are ready for the wrecking crews to come in and, and take them down. Many times when a house is taken down, the sidewalks need to be repaired or replaced. What has that to do with the object of, at hand? <laughs> Plenty. In the area of the west side where I walk daily are four different spots where the sidewalks have been taken up and will be uh, replaced. At all four places, the dirt looks uh, like um, there had been a, at one time a, a fire in each one of those locations. And some of the rocks are charred, some uh, such as the coal and shale are brittle to the point that they just crumble when you pick them up, which is also the result of being in a fire. Since at uh, one time in the past, most homes were heated by burning coal, I thought these might be places where the ash was dumped while um, cleaning out the coal burning furnaces. But I believe this is to have been true at all four sites mentioned. In one of the spots where the sidewalks have been removed were some unusual stones that caught my attention straight off. There were four in particular that I felt as if they... Uh, we're sending vibrations my way, if you will. I believe that stones can uh, can do that. But sometimes this does this does happen, and I have some very strange experiences with stones that uh, seem to be able to communicate. And along those lines, you should see my video, Osco to Michigan's Mysterious Indian Image Stone, which I think you'll probably find quite fascinating, 100% true. There were four stones that caught my attention, and so I picked each up, gave a cursory look, and and then placed them in my jacket pocket. Once home, I washed the dirt away so I could see the stone's uh, features more clearly. All four pieces are of the same type of stone, and all bear marks indicating very clearly that ancient man adjusted their shape to suit his needs. These are also fossil-bearing uh, rocks, so together let's examine uh, these, uh, these four pieces. The first rock is quite heavy, uh, for its size that is, it is grain, uh, grain color with multitudes of tiny quartz crystals that sparkle beautifully in the sun. This first stone comes to a crude point, but it is easy to see the signs of the arc pecking uh, motion on it, as uh, well as having some material, re material removed by napping. This piece contains a number of small fossils, but what really excites, uh, what really, but what exactly was this relic intended to be? The manner in which it comes to a point suggests to me that it may have been used as a device for the arc pecking process against other stone items. It could also be planned as, a, as an effigy, uh, as in uh, an effigy in profile. It was much resembles the head of a turtle, which was much used as a totem in Michigan. So whether or not it was used as an effigy is purely speculation at this juncture. All four pieces in this assembly are the same type of stone as I've already said, a stone which is quite hard and quite dense. The piece that I just described to you measured about four inches long by two inches across by one half or two one and a half or two inches thick. The second piece in this uh, small tool kit is uh, a chopper possibly a hafted tool. One end tapers to a sharp bit with, uh, with signs of pressure flaking on the, on the bit. Looking down on the piece, it is clearly seen that material was removed to shape this, much in the way Native Americans shaped arrowheads and other tools. These pieces would have been quite difficult to work with because of how very hard the stone is. The pole, ends coming, uh, the pole end comes to a, a rounded point. That could have been used are useful, uh, some useful purpose, but even at that, I believe the piece was mounted, half to if you will, on a wooden handle, which would have made it an adze or a smallish axe. This is a very nice piece. One side ha um, edge has uh, been pressure flaked, uh, also one of the side edges, I should say. The, um, the shape of the rock fits perfectly into the palm of the, of the hand, giving a secondary use as a knife. 
Um, yeah, you know, I got to stop here and add something to you in, in thinking about this. I'm telling you um, how this fits in the pot a certain way in my hand to be used as a certain tool or device. And you got to be really careful, especially if you're buying on eBay. So I don't. Because you're never certain of an artifact unless you take it out of the ground yourself. These pieces would be misconstrued by many people because they're not common artifact forms. Um, you have to look for the details, the little details on them that, that bespeak of it being worked uh, by the hand of man. Interestingly, though, on eBay, they are supposed to have uh, someone set up as, a, as an expert on each category, like Indian artifacts. And yet I go there and I see these things that are no way Indian artifacts. They're just stones with a certain shape that people put up for sale, claiming them to be Indian artifacts, don't know what the hell they're talking about, and sell them. And it's really sad because there are a lot of idiots that are trying to sell bogus um, artifacts on eBay. And eBay just lets it happen. The wonderful, yeah, right, wonderful people they are at eBay. Gag, puke. Anyways, let's move on. Um, where did I leave off? No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. One, uh, one side edge has been pressure flaked also. The shape of the rock fits perfectly into the palm of the hand, giving this a secondary use as a knife. This artifact measures uh, as follows, two inches long by one and a half across by three quarters of an inch thick. Of the four pieces found at this site, this one shows the work of human hands far better than the other three. The third piece is a handheld knife likely used around the campfire. This piece actually shows two sides to have been traditionally formed into a usable device. I have to give these Native American people um, a great deal of credit uh, for what they were able to make and use from nothing more than the material that they found lying around them. These first three pieces are extremely crude in design, and the material they are made from is not from, uh, uh, from uh, a woodland site here in Michigan, I don't believe. This would have had to be stone that was imported from another part of what would one day be called North America. And we do know there were trade routes out west, and there were trade routes down south, and there were trade routes to the east. So our people here in Michigan were pretty, really pretty well attached um, to other uh, communities. Lastly is the smallest piece in this little collection. The way this is held, it is often effective, uh, an effective little scraping tool, very effective. Only, one, only the one edge of this rock could have been utilized. This piece measures about three inches long by one inch by one and a quarter inches. All four of the pieces are crude in their method of production and the final finished product. The middle and late woodland people did certainly not produce these, and I, I doubt very much that early woodland people turned these out either. Due to the overall crude workmanship, I must place these in the middle to late archaic, which means if you if I am accurate that they are in excess of 6,000 years old. All in all, not a bad find when you consider it was just looking through uh, burnt dirt, which was uh, under a sidewalk and at that uh, the city is, is presently restoring. I spoke to one of the workers yesterday and asked him if the burnt material was put down as a base for when they poured the new concrete, and just as I expected, he replied that they had not, that that was already there. So that's about all I have to say right now on these particular artifacts. With all the work on sidewalks being done currently, I would expect to make further finds as spring and summer progresses. And in fact, I returned to the, the one site today and picked up a number, number of pieces that I have soaking right now that I believe also are artifacts associated with the ones I've just told you about. If they are, I will do a second uh, video, an update now. Moving on to other things, this is unrelated, but related in a way. <clears throat> I used <clears throat> my brand new Dell in, built-in webcam in the uh, in my computer to do a video of this and show the pieces and and illustrate the pieces as uh, you know I was talking. And unfortunately, um, I got all the video, but not one ounce of sound, no audio at all. If any of you know um, how to fix this problem, please let me know. It would be very, very, very greatly appreciated. Okay, that's all I've got for this time. Hope you have an awesome, great day. Bye-bye. Oh, good evening.
Um, at this point in the video that you've been watching, you've looked at the still pictures I did of um, four artifacts specifically, this being one of them that you're seeing right now. A return visit to, to that site today produced three more um, Indian artifacts. I, I think you can get a better idea, though, of what these were used for rather than just looking at the picture, still pictures that I put on. This is a stone that I believe was used for arc packing, hitting against another stone with that point right there. Oddly, uh, the, the uh, profile looks like a, a turtle head, more so um, on this side. I don't believe that was the intent. Um, this would have been good um, use, uh, to use in arc packing because it's small, but it's a very heavy stone. And so, uh, and the crudeness of these is also what makes me feel that they are late archaic, late archaic period. The next one was the Celt. The Celt is uh, an interesting piece. I don't know why the camera just went out of focus. But anyways, here on the front, you can see where pieces have been taken off from the, the main stone, same way it was done in the production of arrowheads. And if you look at it upright, it has a sharp bit rounded there, a sharp bit across the front. And turning it over, it's just a, it's encrusted with the, with dirt that, that's hardened. It will not come off. Um, that's probably the, one of the two most well-defined pieces in this uh, collection of artifacts that I that I found here in Saginaw, Michigan. The next one is a stone knife. Now, stone knives were a dime a dozen, so to speak, because they usually were uh, made up of um, debitage, if you will, pieces of of uh, of uh, leftover from tool production, which were sharp enough to use but weren't actually modified too much, which is the case with this one. Here on the edge, um, on this, here we go, on this edge, you can see tiny pressure flaking along there to sharpen this. And that's done on both sides, it has a nice bevel. Uh, there, um, yeah. Uh, this other side could also be used, perhaps for cutting, but I, I think the main uh, thing people did with this one was along this edge. All right, next, and the last of the original four, this is a scraper. Um, you'll see how it comes down here and forms a, a small bit, if you will, and um, it's, it has a nice sharpness to it, and it would have been used really e easily for scraping or cutting. Um, a nice piece, really, and that was the the second one, which was uh, pretty recognizable within that artifact collection. Um, okay, then the pieces that I found today. This one, you know, the, the neat thing about these kind of artifacts is that most people wouldn't even recognize them. You'll recognize an arrowhead, you'll recognize a spear point, you might even recognize a shard of pottery. But a lot of these tools, a person wouldn't even recognize. I studied for 30 some years, which is why I. I do. This is a finger pestle, okay? And it was used for grinding, you know, like that. You can see the base um, shows a lot of wear, and it shows some residue from whatever it was used to grind, uh, probably food stuff. It was, it's not a stone that was modified. It's a stone that was found, picked up, and used. And it had to be used a lot to form that that spot there, or that flat uh, area at the base where the grinding took place. There would have been another stone that would have also um, ground the, uh, against it. Okay, anyways, this is an old bait form. This is a, a broken um, rock. Um, I question this as being an artifact, but I give it about a 95% chance that it is because of the context in which it was found, um, I flipped over, it's rounded, it would be unifacial, worked on one side. Both edges show pressure type flaking marks. So 
I, I, I believe that this was um, indeed part of this cache of artifacts that I, that I found. And lastly is another wedge, well, it's a wedge-shaped piece. It's wedged down to a sharp edge here, and that edge has been, again, there's been pressure applied on both sides to sharpen that, uh, that blade part of this stone. Um, again, very crude. Now, I'm going to show you a stone <clears throat> that I found there that I'm totally clueless as to what kind of stone it is. It's, um, it has little bumps all over it, almost like a toad. And the other side is concave here. Um, I don't believe it's a relic or an artifact. I just believe it's an unusual stone. Um, could even be the byproduct from uh, people who, in historic times, uh, warmed their homes with um, uh, coal because of slag type stuff that sometimes uh, come out. They call them clinkers. This isn't what a clinker, any of the clinkers I've seen look like. But if you know what it is or have an idea about it, please put your comments in the section below. I would really love to hear from you. Um, lastly, these were all found um, May, May is the 7th, I believe. They were all found between May And the seventh, a small cache of late archaic stone tools. Thanks for watching.